1,624 days since the last A-League men's game here when Terry Antonis was the villain turned hero in navy blue. And it's not just the stadium that has changed. Just three players remain from the two teams that day in 2018. And for Graham Arnold and Kevin Muscat, now reach Steve Corica and Tony Popovich. But the sentiment remains the same. The two biggest cities in Australia divided by their love of different codes of football. At times, it seems they exist in two different sporting universes, but it's the world game that has given Sydney and Melbourne an off-field rivalry to be proud of, and that really means something. It is the 59th Big Blue. If the Melbourne Cup stops the nation, then this fixture starts the pulse racing whenever it's in town. So the team news, Sydney and A-League men's debuts to off-season signings, Diego Caballo, Robert Mack and Joe Lolly. The latter two will play either side of Adam LaFondra in Steve Corica's new 4-3-3. The other headline news, the return of Luke Bratton, who's back for the first time since the grand final of 2021. James Donaghy partners Alex Wilkinson in defence after Jack Rodwell sustained a groin injury in training on Friday. Anthony Caceres plays his 200th A-League men's match. Three debutants for victory as well. Headlined by Marquis signing Nani. Four times the English Premier League champion with Manchester United. Goalkeeper Paul Izzo returns to the competition after a two year stint in Greece. And we got two Spanish left backs on show tonight as Cadete, who plays, who played in Kazakhstan last year, makes his victory debut. Tommy Juric, Jason Guerrier unavailable. So Stefan Nigro deputises at right fullback. the man new season new players new hope same old hostilities resume though between the two hues of blue where will it be won and lost tonight Andy Harper well good evening Simon welcome to the new season one and all fantastic to be in this quite remarkable new arena fitting Viewpoint that it's Sydney v Melbourne. And Sydney launching the first attack that easily tied it up by Ryan Marchand inside his own penalty area. Expected to be fast and furious at the opening stages. These games normally are hubs. Yeah, well, particularly you know, with so much at stake from the Sydney viewpoint, moving home so much energy and excitement and expectation about coming back to their home, Dunghill. It's been a long and winding four years emotionally as much as anything they managed to maintain a good standard for the bulk of that journey but it came a cropper last year so Sydney with all the expectation in their new digs needing to get the show back on the road and the game's first quarter off Ryan Grant well early pressure for Sydney in their own area defending the corner Nani's first contribution to the championship was Measured and patient, prized the ball out wide for Cadete. His attempted cross was blocked. And now victory through Jake Rimmer can launch the set piece. Round one last season against Western. Entry scored from a Brimmer corner. Roderick Miranda on the end of it. He's up there again, being closely watched by Alex Wilkinson. Brimmer's delivery. And that post, it was Josh Berlante who had an awful lot of time to think about it. Former Sydney FC player, of course, won titles with the Sky Blues. There's a lot of traffic there. And the rain is consistent, but it's not hurting the players. The pitch is holding up. It's the first big test for the new pitch, really. It's had games on it already. We're here for the Matildas, of course. On the back, slipping away from one. On the heavy touch from Yazbek, slip through though. Sydney score. It's Mac, the slow back. And Sydney are back. 
at the Sydney Football Stadium. They lead the Big Blue on the quarter hour mark, thanks to their new signing. Well, the attack on the Harvey Norman replay looked like it was going to break down. Yasbek loses his footing here, but Mack continues. It's a beauty there. You just think it's about to break down, but great composure from the youngster to maintain his mind and maintain, regain his feet and put it on for Mack to attack and hit the back of the net. And Sydney FC away at home. Game one of the new season and their recruit gets them underway. That's what you want on your debut. Roderick Miranda seeking and finding briefly. Castido. Heavy touch. And the foul on Grant. Castido, another one with. Aspirations forced his way into the squad at the back end of last season on the back of his first double figure goal tally. Tony Popovich speaking to me last week on the Template website saying that he expects more from the likes of D'Agostino and Brimmer and Falami. Here's Joe Lolly worth a try. Izzo had the angles covered, though. It looks bright, doesn't he, Joe Lolly? Yeah, he's very bubbly. Very willing to run a defenders one-on-one. -on -one. That's why he's been brought to Sydney, of course. The restructure of the team required out-and-out wingers. Lovely ball by Nardi. Quite the elevation required to pick out a teammate. Victory will come again. It's D'Agostino having a stretch. Red made out. Open goal, but Brimmer can't convert. It's really well defended by Anthony Caceres, throwing his body in the line of the shot. Well, two fabulous challenges from Sydney to see a, a resurgent victory away in consecutive waves. D'Agostino does brilliantly there. Really tough to bring that down over your shoulder with the goalkeeper bearing down on you. But D'Agostino does fabulously. And thankfully, from the goalkeeper's viewpoint, he looks behind and Caceres is there to double up. Brimmer's corner again. There was a victory hit on the end of that. Little drop here for Falami. And D'Agostino, it's 1-1. That is an absolute peach of a header from Nick D'Agostino. He opened the scoring in last season's Big Blue at Jubilee Stadium in May. Lassus's top scorer for victory is on a mission again. It's 1-1. One, one. Well, the Harvey Norman replay from the corner shows Sydney, whose defence has been good in the last couple of really excellent victory attacks. But it can do nothing about this brilliant header from Nick D'Agostino. Ben Falami drops it on the spot. That is so difficult to score from there. That trajectory. Your body moving away from goal. So much power from D'Agostino to level the scores here at Allianz Stadium. Brilliant from victory. And it's the victory. Fans turn to celebrate. That angle shows just how powerful and precise that header was from Nick D'Agostino. Joe Lolly onto his favourite left boot. It's too hot to handle for Izzo, who got so lucky there. Ball came back off the uprights and into his grateful arms. And Joe Lolly so close to opening his account for Sydney FC. Two more big games to come in the A League men's competition tomorrow. Weather permitting, of course. Western Sydney Wanderers against Perth and Combank and Linton versus Adelaide. In New Zealand, the Knicks. Here's Mack. Danger again for victory. Mack! It's going to be a Sydney corner. Beautiful. The fans are going to like this. Lolly to Mack. It's like Lillian Marsh. 
wrap it with a global game view. Lolly founds Mark. He one twos with Caceres and shoots so impressively. I'll tell you what, that touch probably crucial in the end. First, it's uh, under a minute to go now as Redman clears. Intelligent header by Lolly for Grant. He spotted the run of Lafondre, but Izzo will get there ahead of him. Placing Ivan Kaliber between the posts this season, Paul Izzo. After his uh, two years with Zanti in Greece. Time at the newly rebuilt Allianz Stadium. Really good opening 45 minutes. Robert Mack with his first goal for his new club on the quarter hour mark, teed up by Patrick Yazbek. But a fantastic header by Nick D'Agostino on 31 minutes, squaring the ledger. There's been chances for both teams besides, but at the break, as they so often are in this fixture, they're all square. Sydney FC 1, Melbourne Victory 1. And that uh, reshuffle works out for Sydney FC. Andy Harper, typically tight, intense affair, but really good entertainment in that first 45 minutes. Yeah, no doubt about that. The little scoreline yeah, tells an accurate story of the moments that either side had periods of play but it certainly wasn't stale a little bit of surface water unsurprisingly starting to become apparent there's just been a lot of rain and the surface the, the pitch has held up really well great drainage I guess you expect it to drain nicely when you've spent hundreds of millions of dollars on, on the new thing but it's held up well yeah, it's needed too hasn't it in Monsuda. Interesting that Paolo Retre is it's the right fullback position and Ryan Grant who's on the ball here looks as though he's playing the second half as a central defender. That there's Alex Walkinson with the ice bag. And, uh, the left groin area. Yazbek dug out well. Sydney, Lolly with Retray on the overlap, uses him as the dummy. Dummy, not the dummy. <laughs> well, that's where the ball ended up, <laughs> unfortunately, for Sydney. Expect more, actually. I mean, that's the stock play. Speaking, keeping it in, in an English reference, there's a, a lot of Chris Waddle about this type of move. Cutting on the left, not such a, a, a gangly, loping gait as the former England international. for victory. D'Agostino. Oh, now referee has collided. And the Sydney FC player, and that's completely knocked the stuffing out of Chris Peet. I think it's Ryan Grant, isn't it? Yeah. Goodness me. He has absolutely floored the ref. And I know that will get one or two ironic cheers from the supporters. Oh, bang. Oof. This. He is absolutely yeah. clean him up. Totally accidentally, of course. That's the head clash. And Chris Beats. And then it's a little... <laughs> I'm not sure I shouldn't laugh, but... Was that 
the reflex action of the referee possibly concussed as he falls to the ground, head bounces off the turf, reaches for his whistle. And on we go. Great experience. Well done, both sets of players. You know, they could have been with the emotion in this fixture. They could have been in a couple asking a question. Broxham. by D'Agostino, down the line by Negro. Nani. That's a Sydney throw. What have you made of Nani's performance yeah. tonight, Hubs? Yeah, good. I mean, it's been a little bit peripheral this second half, but he's had some nice touches. And, you know, I see... Well, the league sees his job as driving attention and publicity. From a team viewpoint, I see the big value in him bringing the club is is the, the leadership, the experience, the tuition he can provide to a Jake Brimmer. Driving run forward from Cadete and then the pitch held the ball up just fractionally, which was enough to send him off balance. Bramante, victory's turn to have a little spell. It's been that sort of game, ebbed and flowed. It's a very intelligent ball through the fullback. Nani across the face, surely! Chris Economides! who didn't score a single goal in the last A-League men's season, has put that right. Round one in Sydney. And Melbourne victory. Lead for the first time in the Big Blue tonight. And Nani was at the centre of it. Well, you want to ask about the contribution of Nani. Well, have a look at this. Beautiful through ball. It's superb. That is excellent. Tantalising on the Harvey Norman replay, Andrew Redmayne. Can he cut it out of the six-yard box? Evidently not. And the boy from the southern suburbs of Sydney scores at the southern end of the Sydney Football Stadium. Chris Economides into the roof of the net to give victory the lead. Super play. That is marquee football from Nani. And that is a thundering finish from Chris Economides. Beaten by victory. Last game of the old in the end stadium on three goals to two. As Max Burgess earns a corner of Josh Brillante. And they lost the last home big blue as well at Jubilee Stadium 4 1 back in May. Just over 10 minutes plus stoppages to try and avoid another reverse to one of their biggest rivals. Corner. It's into a decent area. And Luke Bratton will get another go here. A nibble from Volupale is enough for the whistle to blow. Well, that was really not a foul. It's been needed to give away. Or Volupale, rather. That does give... Luke Bratton a chance to leave it for Caballo. Chris Beath wants the two-man wall back a couple of metres before Caballo can deliver. Now they're ready. And his own quarterback coming, didn't get there. It's 2-2. It's James Donachey against his old club. His first A-League men's goal in almost six years. And how crucial could that be for the Sky Blues? Well, to add insult to injury for Nishan Valupale, this is not a free kick he needed to concede. But what a free kick it was from Diego Caballo. And the Cove have had a great view of two stunning-headed goals. One they didn't enjoy from D'Agostino. This one they loved from the docks. On the back stick, Victory Central Defence has dealt with this so wonderfully all night. But they can't handle the big man on the back post this time. 2-2 at Allianz. Well, he scored in the cup against MacArthur last season. And he hasn't scored in the league since December 2016. He might not even have played tonight.
had Jack Rodwell been fit. And it's Nick D'Agostino. Outside him, economy, and he should be treating it is. It's Josh Brillante, and victory lead again through their captain. 1,350 fans going absolutely wild in the corner. What a game! Well, it's punch and counter-punch. It's such magnificent, incisive football. And Steve Corica licking his wounds. But the battle in midfield, ball spread wide from Berlanti. Look at him con continue his run. D'Agostino looks one way, passes the other. Economides scoring the second. Now puts it on a plate for the third for his skipper, Josh Berlanti, to make it 3-2 at Allianz. What a ripping game we've got here. Josh Brillante won two championships with Sydney FC. Couldn't miss from there. What an impact off the bench Chris Economides has made. Good feet by Patrick Woods. Here's Max Burgess dropping the shoulder. Burgess! Brilliant save from Paul Izzo. Brilliant effort too. The game just keeps getting better, Simon. It keeps getting better. What a great piece of work from Izzo. Lovely, rasping shot from Burgess. What a great camera angle here. That's going in. Paul Izzo to retrieve missiles from the stand behind. Which is not really what you want to see. And he'll do that all night. It's not his time. They're wasting the fence. Tick over into the 97th minute. Might still be just a little bit of time to go. Maybe one more chance for Sydney if they can get the ball forward. It's Caceres. Patrick Wood has got around Negro. Looks promising for Sydney. Wood needs a good cross. That's gone out of play, and that might just be that. Well, Lee Broxon's chased. Patrick went all the way down, they've ended up in the advertising hoardings, and that's that. Another classic big blue. Booze round out, ring out around Allianz Stadium. But not from the Melbourne Victory fans, just as it was four years ago at the old SFS. So it is tonight again at the new Allianz Stadium. And by the same scoreline, three to two. Victory win the big blue. And serve notice. They will be a force to be reckoned with again. Nearly 22,000 watched it. Brilliant entertainment. Five goals, a thriller. But in the end, it's victory who win it by three goals to two.